talk to any of them because they're all Mormon try to get me back to the oh, church. Really? And I don't know. Uh, okay, well, I guess we're going. And yeah, I don't know where. Uh, what time is it? It's 3 50. I see you too. Okay, here. All right, so Sophia, um, I should have got something ready to introduce. Can you oh. just tell us about yourself? Uh, I'm a visionary artist. Uh, my art focuses on uh, spirituality and nature and sacredness of earth and uh, on uh, evolving uh, human species or ascending human species. And Trying to be human, and uh, my art is very sort of rigid, uh, kind of channeled, and I can get a sense and sometimes it grounds it back to earth. Can I put uh, a link online? Oh, yeah, yeah, on the chat for the people to uh, go see your artwork. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? It's the uh, studio space sign. Um, all on the studio space sign. Dot com? Yes. Studio looks at you. Studio space time dot com. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, and here we got an example. <laughs> I don't know if that'll let's really... try it. Let's Um, the same thing that I do. Sit down. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. So you were going to talk about um, how shamanism or how your art practice informs your shamanism practice. Uh, or the other way around. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or the other way around. Yeah, so it's kind of the same thing. Our, our art practice and spiritual practice, uh, for me, are kind of the same thing. It's the, uh, not the only form of my spiritual practice. But shamanic practice, I feel like it's, shamanism is the oldest uh, uh, and most natural form of uh, human spirituality on earth and it's how we remember who we truly are and how connected we are to our planet and uh, I feel like unless you're truly connected uh, to to your body, to the elements, uh, to the planet earth, then you can't really truly raise your consciousness and your vibration um, because if, if you do, then you're just kind of, if you think you do, you are raising your consciousness without being grounded and without being real and honoring Mother Earth and honoring the elements, honoring nature, uh, uh, without that, then you're kind of, you think you're spiritual, but I think in that case, it might just kind of be spiritual bypassing and airy fairy stuff. <laughs> I agree. So, yeah, so that's, yeah. So and, the painting grounds you, do you feel? Um, definitely grounds me. It gives me a focus and uh, gives me something that I can optimize. For my personal life experience and my life story, which is a lot to do with healing my whole life uh, from 
traumatic uh, beginning of life. And that way I can continue to heal and alchemize that and uh, provide that as, then as medicine to to the community, to others. And it, that feels very important to share my journey uh, that way. And also to not get too hung up in the ego aspect of being an artist, which can also happen. But, you know, we're all human, but... Uh, Life mm -hmm. tends to humble you too. So yeah. <laughs> well, so. Mike, I have a theory that you can actually uh, infuse the painting with your intent, mm -hmm. and that people can then get that healing intent back when they meditate on your painting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. I, I and I think that uh, some people do get it, and. Uh, and it feels like it's that's been part of my journey as an artist because okay so like I was sick my whole childhood but art was like the one thing that I had and it it started that way and it has developed uh, ever since that early part of my life and then um, uh, energies kind of naturally get infused uh, through. Just uh, asking for guidance, uh, asking for a vision, you know, um, and it just doesn't necessarily happen right when I'm asking, but it happens maybe later on when kind of like when I least expect it, uh, I may just be doing some something like a normal chore and I'll get like a vision or a download and or piece of inspiration and that will give me a starting point um, to kind of start the painting and then develop it from there. Um, and I also like, I need to work really intuitively uh, because if I knew exactly what I was doing, then it wouldn't be as interesting or as fun uh, of a journey of discovery. Uh, and you would be look you wouldn't be looking to that internal guidance right yeah but i mean you can still like set some like i was saying in the workshop today like you can still like set some parameters like and then not and then leave the rest to to see what's going to emerge out of that um so it's good to have a starting point that you consciously set up and then allow it to develop uh, intuitively, if that makes sense. And you're going to have some work in the, in our uh, gallery online, which is medicinewoman.gallery. So you can go there and take a look at some of Sophia's stuff, but also go to the studiospacetime.com and see her work. And she also teaches workshops occasionally at various places, like she taught one day here in Hotchkiss, Colorado. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I got to teach the workshop with a little bit more uh, technical basis, because the other workshops that I taught at the Shamanic Art Center were more about the intuitive approach. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I designed them on purpose, so that it would show people like not to be intimidated and not to worry about whether you're an artist or whether you have talent, which I feel like the whole talent thing is a bit of pro programming, you know. Overrated. Overrated, yeah. Uh, like I, I, it, there's a lot more about uh, intention and practice. Now, practice is really what builds up your artistic character and your allows you to discover more and more of your artistic style and about what you really want to express and what's really going to start expressing through you. So the, the two workshops that I thought that were intuitive, I designed them that way because I felt like there wasn't enough focus on 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 in, uh, um, like intuition and and how art can open up uh, access to guidance in 
some unusual ways uh, by sort of bypassing the rational mind, bypassing the verbal mind, and uh, and how magical things can happen when you allow yourself to kind of play and this way and um, and see what comes out. Uh, and um, yeah, so for those workshops, we, we actually did some shamanic drumming. So we did a, a journey and then we painted after that. But I also explained the, the process of making an abstract background and then seeing what you see in the abstract background and bringing it up into form. Um, so the workshop that I taught today was kind of almost the opposite of those workshops because it focused much more on the technical aspects of the art of painting and kind of set the foundation on like the elements of painting and what makes a painting uh, I guess engaging and I guess kind of successful in, in, in the eyes of somebody else that encounters it. Um, so I feel like it's really good to know some of these rules um, of traditional painting. Um, and that way you can see just how deeply you want to get into them. You may want to get into them much more deeply and really get your figure drawing, really get your anatomy studies, your values, your lights and darks. You know, like really figure out your compositions and stuff like that. Um, but also, on the other hand, it's good to know the rules because when you study the rules, then you know you get to a certain point, then you know how to break the rules <laughs> in order to create your your own rules. Because that's kind of a bit of a metaphor for life, too, right? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Right. <laughs> right. If you find out what most people accept, then know why you're breaking that rule. Right. And Not what just... you really want to bring through that way. And yeah. What's your message? Yeah, what's your really what your your what's your truth that needs to come out that can come out that way. In in a visual art, uh, which is a way that uh, it you know, nothing you know it, you can express things in visual art that you can't express in any any other way. It's like you can express things in music that you can't ex express in any other way, or in sound healing. You know, you can express, create, you know, a form of energy. You know, a form of healing. And or in in writing, in poetry, in song, in form, you can express it you can't in any other way. So that's just kind of. As human beings, we need these things. They're very important for our survival. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you and for uh, having me. I think I want to just uh, make an announcement that we are looking for other people to come and be um, on this show to tell us their views on shamanic art, visionary art. And so if you're interested, go to our website at shamanicarts.center and you can sign up to be on the show. Thank you very much. For Thank you so much for having me.